Why sail to France from Ramsgate? Our goal was to sail to the Med avoiding the Bay of Biscay and the long way round, so we settled on the long way down. Options had brought us safely to Ramsgate after sailing more than 600 miles from Hull. Now there were jobs to complete, there was provisioning required and to wait for better conditions before crossing the channel to France. But people had said, why sail there from Ramsgate and not Dover for an easier crossing? The short answer is little ships, but the reason is a little bit more involved. The list of civilian boats for requisition. I'm not going back. I know this isn't sailing, and that may be why you're watching, but hey, this is part of our journey through this world. Our explanation story starts across the Atlantic Ocean on a recent visit to see family in Canada. We took time out to follow the path of Sheena's great-grandfather McFarland through Ontario in the late 1800s. With scant information, augmented by research with local libraries and university records, we were led across the Ottawa River into Quebec province for the first of two complete surprises. Here we are reporting from uh, Gatineau in um, well, right now Quebec, but Quebec. just over there is Ottawa. And um, where are we? Uh, we're in Gatineau and we're in Hull Marina. And there is Hull Marina. Don't believe me? Yes, it is. It's called Hull. Hull. And just over here to prove it is a sign that's down there that says Key to Hull. 1901. Who would have thought? And it is actually we have read, named after my birth town, Kingston upon Hull. So there you go. And where this one here worked for a very long time. Reporting from Hull, <laughs> Quebec. We traced and visited three family homes. The first in South Mountain, Ontario. The second in Hull, Quebec. And the last one in Ottawa, Ontario. In Hull, the house is gone, but the street where they lived is still there. Another surprise awaited us. Sheena's great uncle Foster Murray McFarland left Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario in 1917. This was to serve the war effort in Europe. Stationed in England, he was a flying instructor and observer. In September 1918, tragically he was killed in action. Back home in Ottawa, his sweetheart Beatrice was mourning the loss of her fiancé she'd hoped to marry. This was a sad recurring scene across the Canadian provinces and the rest of the world. Our quest following the McFarlands was an emotional one, and the next surprise was so fitting to our long way down journey. We found the house Beatrice lived in and learnt that she did eventually marry and had a good life. We also learnt that her nephew was a boating enthusiast who later in his life bought an old boat from an architect in Ottawa. This British vessel was previously owned by the Canadian General Allard who sailed it down the Rhine and through the French canals to the Met. At the end of his tour in 1964, he transported her to Ontario, Canada. We know that Dragonfly is one of the 850 little ships which sailed from Ramsgate to Dunkirk in May 1940 to help the rescue of the soldiers from the beaches. Even before this encounter, we had already planned to sail our little ship across the English Channel to Dunkirk. This passage following in the wake of all those small vessels was going to be very special. Options arrived in Ramsgate just ahead of predicted high winds and then waited five days for a weather window before leaving port. Moored in the West Marina, we used the time to carry out repairs and plan ahead. We'd found the cause of the keel position indicator problem while at Gunwharf Keys, Portsmouth, and we needed repairs. Just seen 37 knots on the wind indicator.
I chanced across some engineers with welding services while they were working near the marina. They were willing to act immediately. Uplands Engineering took my drawings to repair the sensor mount and to supply a stainless steel brace for the hydraulic tray. Here we are in a deserted security area in the port of Ramsgate. Cheeky little fox comes along to say hello. <laughs> it's crazy! Passage planning to cross the channel to Dunkirk involved, among other things, avoiding the Goodwin Sands and safely negotiating the traffic separation scheme. So I haven't tightened up the Jubilee cliff yet because I just want to make sure that it's going to be presented in the right place. Okay. Right. Get up my boat, that's your choice. All of us can learn from the beach. Now clear of the Goodwin Sands, we crossed the southward traffic route without seeing any other vessels. It seemed we were alone out there, despite knowing that over 400 commercial vessels a day use the Dover Strait. The sea swell reflected the severity of the recent high winds, and regrettably Sheena had to take refuge down below. Crossing the maritime boundary between the UK and France, we encountered close radar targets in the northbound traffic route. At cruising speed, these huge vessels can travel half a mile in less than two minutes. That's faster than Roger Bannister. Okay, so we're gonna pass within half a mile. That's okay. So we're gonna go in front. Her. 
dangerous radar target still. Our little ship covers the same distance in around six minutes. That's more my kind of pace. Arriving, Dunkirk East. It was an emotional arrival at Dunkirk. This signified the start of the next phase of our journey and also satisfied the desire to experience the crossing of the little ships, albeit without the dangers and suffering they faced in 1940. Just shimmied up that like a monkey. Oh, there's our mast over there. Well, hopefully the weather will be better than this. She's got a red light. Yeah. <laughs> 